In the previous video, I've introduced the uh, NCR formula, but I kind of plucked it out of thin air. So I kind of wanted to explain via another example where it comes from and how it's built. So let's say we've got the situation where we've got eight people playing musical chairs, okay? And in a single round, I'm going to remove four of the chairs. So there's only going to be four people left in the game. How many different ways um, can these four people sit in these chairs, effectively? So, in other words, I would have eight people to choose from to sit in the first chair. And then I would have seven remaining to sit in the second chair, six remaining to sit in the third chair, and five remaining to sit in the last chair. Okay, so effectively, we've got eight times seven times six times five different ways, different arrangements, okay, and what we would call permutations. Now, this looks very similar to eight factorial. It's just missing that last bit, okay? It's missing that times by four, times by three, times by two, times by one, that's on the end. Now, if I'm going to add it to the end, I've got to divide by that number as well. Otherwise, it won't be the same value. So what I could say is that 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 is the same as 8 factorial over 4 factorial. Now, 4 is coming from the fact that it's 8 people and there are 4 chairs. So 8 take away 4. So you could represent this as 8 factorial over 8 take away 4 factorial. OK. Now, the way that we've done this is that, well, actually, if I've got these eight people and I've got these four chairs laid out, then this is telling me how many different ways we could have people sat in these chairs. OK? So um, what we would be saying is that if we had these eight people and we called them A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, so these eight people, then the way that I've done it here is that I would be saying that A, B, C, D, if that's how they were sat, would be different to B, A, C, D. OK? Because that's a different thing. But it is included in here. However, we know that in a game of musical chairs, and I've got these four chairs put down, um, I don't care who sits in which chair. All I'm interested in is which four people are going to be going on to the next round. So really, A, B, C, D means just as much as BACD. In fact, these are equivalent as far as I'm concerned. It doesn't matter who sits down first, who sits down second, who sits down third, who sits down fourth. OK? Just so long as it is those four people. So what I've got here is a case where actually, well, if ABCD is the same as BACD, then how many different ones and am I including that are equivalent? So A, B, C, D, OK, would be exactly the same as A, B, D, C, or A, D, or let's say A, C, B, D, or A, C, D, B, OK? You can see where this is going to go, right? there's going to be all these different variations, OK? All these different ways of doing it, which are going to be equivalent. Now, how many of them are there? Well, there's going to be four ways 
of putting in that first position. Three in the second. Uh, sorry, two in the third. One in the fourth position left over. So if I was to write them all out, there would be 24 different ways of writing down A, B, C, D in any order. So that means that I've got 24 too many. Okay, So I need to divide this by the number of ways of picking four people. Now, 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is just 4 factorial. So if I'm going to divide this by 4 factorial, this is 8 factorial over 4 factorial, 8 minus 4 factorial. And so this is how many actually I need. This is the number of different ways um, that I could end up with what I would refer to as different results after this round of musical chairs. And that's what I'm interested in. And that is where this NCR formula is coming from. This is a basic example of it, where if I had n people playing musical chairs, and I had um, r seats for them to sit in, then this represents the number of combinations of people that I could have left in the next round. Okay? And this is where this NCR formula is coming from. And this is linking directly into um, the Pascal's triangle, because this gives you the elements of Pascal's triangle that you want. And that is what we're going to be using within binomial expansion.